that the business goal, of course, is revenue generation. Our goal from the bookkeeping or accounting side of things is to enter the financial transactions as they take place, typically using some of these forms, which are broken out by customer, vendor, employee, and so forth. These then create the financial transactions that are used to create the financial statements, the end result from a reporting standpoint, the result that will then be used at least for tax preparation in the United States generally, and possibly for external use if we have to get like a loan or something like that, and internal use for our own decision making processes. Our other goal from the accounting side of things is to facilitate communication with the people we do business with, customers, vendors, and employees as smoothly as possible so that the focus of the business can be on whatever the business does for our revenue generation. So that's the general idea. Now, when we enter the bank feeds, we might say, is there some kind of way that I can use the bank feeds to shortcut some of the full accounting cycles that we'd be putting in place in a full accounting system. So that's what we want to basically get an idea of. Now to do that, I'm going to jump over to the flow chart. This is a desktop flow chart, but it's just a flow of the forms. The accounting process will be the same. It's just a conceptual flow chart. So when we think about how the accounting process works, we can break it out by vendor or cycle. We've got the vendor cycle or the payable cycle, the expenses cycle, you might call it. We've got the customer cycle or accounts receivable, revenue cycle, income cycle, you might call it. And then we've got the employee cycle, which is might be called the payroll cycle. So clearly at the first cycle, the vendor cycle, at the end of the cycle, whatever that cycle is, we would typically assume that the money is gonna be coming out of the checking account for goods and services that we are purchasing. Therefore, of course, money being the lifeblood of the company is going to be involved in some way in just about every cycle. If we're looking at the customer cycle, we would expect at the end of the cycle, whatever that cycle is, that the checking account would typically be going up for goods and services that we are providing to customers. So once again, money being the lifeblood of the company is involved in the cycle, of course, and with the payroll cycle, we would expect at the end of the cycle, money to be going out in a similar way as with the vendors, although more complex due to laws, regulations, and taxes for you know goods services we're providing or paying for, for uh, the employees that we are paying. So it's useful to break down these cycles and then think about, am I on a cash-based system or am I on an accrual basis by cycle? So we don't want to think about the whole company necessarily when we're trying to figure out how the bank feeds fit into our accounting system, because it's possible for, in, for example, small companies often might be on, in essence, a cash based system for their vendor or expense cycle, but they're forced to be on some kind of accrual based system due to the industry they're in for the revenue cycle. So it's useful to say, okay, am I on a more simplified cash based system? per cycle or am I on more of an accrual system and then figure out, okay, well, how do the bank feeds fit into the system? Because I know each cycle deals with cash and cash is going to be a banking type of transaction. How can I fit that into my system? 